Good day, friends. Welcome to Desire of Ages Ministries. I am your host, Pastor Samuel Ryan. Today, we will be speaking on the topic, the quest for immortality. The quest for immortality. This is a subject that the world, I'm sure, is very intrigued in. They want to know how to achieve immortality. And so as we look together today, in God's holy word, again, we'll be looking at 1 Timothy 6, verses 10 to verse 16. We shall find out what God has to say in his holy book, the Bible, I ask you to get one, a writing instrument and a notepad so that we can discover together today what God has to say in his holy word. But before we do so, would you have a word of prayer with me just now? Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for life, for being in our right minds. We thank you for your blessings upon us. We thank you, O Lord, even for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. For we are searching and looking for and hastening the former and latter rain. For you have declared in Deuteronomy 32 verse 2 that your doctrine shall drop as rain. So let it pour down upon us, O oh dear God, an abundance of rain, the Holy Spirit working in our lives. And that your word be in our mouth, as Jeremiah 5 and verse 14 says, as fire that will burn in our hearts by the Holy Spirit to be obedient unto your word. For in these last days, O oh God, we are looking for and hastening the second coming of our Jesus Christ. We look for him, O oh dear Lord, from the heavens on high. So bless us now in this word, the quest for immortality, and let us rightly divide the word of truth in your holy word, what you have declared to be immortality. And when we shall discover it, that we shall honor it, and give you all the praise, glory, and, and thanks, we pray. Forgive us of our sins, we ask, and save us at last when Jesus shall come. Amen. The quest for immortality. If you would get your Bibles and turn with me to the book 1 Timothy. This is the New Testament. 1 Timothy chapter 6. And we will be reading there verses 10 through verse 16. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verses 10 through verse 16. Verse 10, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Verse 11, but thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Verse 12, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto Thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Verse 13. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. Verse 14. That thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 15. Which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Now verse 16, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. This is what the book 1 Timothy shares with us. But friends, take a look with me at this video. Two roads diverge at a time of grace. If you continue down this path, you will die. We are living. I'm sorry I cannot travel both and be one traveler in two worlds. I felt things out there that I have never felt before. I look back and see my past in shadow. You're insane! We're experiencing life. Don't look back. 
If you stay, then you will leave forever. I am Immortal, Immortal Soul, the director, Linda G. Wells, July 2019. As writer, producer, director of the 2019 short film, I Am Immortal, Linda's motivation and vision is to challenge who has the better life. Is it better to live a long and lonely life or a short and eventful life? The film leaves the audience to ponder which life would they choose? Now look at this picture over here on the right. All these young people, friends of mine, all these young people, this is who this thing of I am immortal is being marketed to. Now some of you may know this band, Mortal Sin, I am immortal, face of despair. What do they have to say? I fear no foe, I have no fear. See me laughing when death comes near. Pain is sweet and life is cold. There's no repenting when you grow old. I seek revenge, my master's hell. Crumbled ruins as his kingdom fell. Talking about Satan now, you know. Most take your life, so set me free. Turn your back on immortality. First Timothy says, God only has immortality. So when you turn your back on immortality, you're turning your back on God. I am immortal, got no right to die. I am immortal, no one can deny. I am immortal till the end of time. I am immortal. I have no guilt, there is no law. My blackened hearts rotting at the core. Break the rules, a crying shame. Nothing matters, cause it's just a game. Take your aim, the life you choose. Just one chance, if you can, if you win or lose. Fight till death, the battle is won. Revenge is mine, the superior one. And you see the link down there where you can find those lyrics. Catered to young people, friends of mine. I am immortal, life, death, and beyond. Ariana, Arundati, and Ajinkia. What do they have to say? We have been conversing with souls for more than two decades now. This is spiritualism. It started as a fun thing. Does did not over there says they have it's fun. A fun thing when we were young, but with time it gave our lives a different meaning. The knowledge we receive from souls is unmatched. It's a crime to keep all this information to ourselves and not share it with the world. I don't want to know. You can keep it to yourself. Questions that we put forward, forwarded to souls were those that everyone is looking and answering for. Questions about what happens when we die. Why we come on earth. How karmic accounts are created and how they affect our reincarnation. Why people die early? What is our life purpose? List of life purposes. What happens when we complete these life purposes and when we don't? Group souls, astral travel, and so on. Introduction by Ariana. This is her story, how she lost her father early on, how she learned science to contact him. Seance, her failures in contacting him, and finally, how she became an expert in calling souls. From the dawn of time, that being when sin came into the world, for that is when the world clock started, mankind has been in search of the so-called utopia, the fountain of youth, just to live forever. This is, this I'm sure, uh, from the existence of the tree of life created by God in the Garden of Eden says the tree of life, right? This tree does not exist on earth anymore, but will be in the new earth, Revelation 2 and verse 7, Revelation 22, verse 2 and verse 14. Before the entrance of sin, Adam and Eve lived in eternity with God. Yes, their immortality, their immortality, friends of mine, was based upon condition. 
they were commanded to eat of the tree of life and upon the condition that they live in obedience to the will of God, they would not die. The condition was they obey the explicit word of God, they live. But disobedience would bring death. Go with me to the book of Genesis chapter 2. This is the first book of the Bible. Genesis chapter 2. Look there at verse 16 and verse 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But, verse 17, Of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. This is God speaking. Now I know many of us go on with the idea that they did not die the day they sinned. Don't be fooled, my friend. They did die. The eternity of which they shared with the eternal God was removed the day they sinned. And they were not given an opportunity to eat of the tree of life, but were cast out of the garden of God. Again, we continue in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verses 22 to 24. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, verse 23, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. So surely we know that the righteousness of God, they were covered with that and they were not ashamed friends of mine god created woman and god created man we have this writing from ellen g white That she is this. Adam and Eve transgressed the law of God. This made it necessary for them to be driven from Eden and be separated from the tree of life, to eat of which their trans after their transgression would perpetuate sin. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life, Genesis 3 and verse 24. Man was dependent upon the tree of life for immortality, and the Lord took these precautions, lest men should eat of that tree and live forever, become immortal sinners. Death entered the world because of transgression, but Christ gave his life that man should have another trial, he did not die on the cross to abolish the law of God, but to secure for man a second probation. He did not die to make sin an immortal attribute. He died to secure the right to destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. He suffered the full penalty of a broken law for the whole world. This he did, not that men might continue in transgression, but that they might return to their loyalty and keep God's commandments and his law as the apple of their eye. Testimony to ministers and gospel workers, Ellen G. White, page 133, paragraph three. The Bible says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. That's Ezekiel 18 and verse four and verse 20. And the wages of sin is death. That's Romans six and verse 23. So come with me to the book of Genesis chapter 5. For this is where it began. Genesis chapter 5 and verse 
5. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died, the Bible says. That is a long life, friends of mine, but he died. Eternity has no end. Therefore, reading the obituary of Adam, as it were, tells us that he was not immortal. Now, I'm sure you are looking for the verse of scripture that give the obituary of Eve, the wife of Adam. The Bible did not record the death of Eve and at what age she died. Therefore, what happened to her? Did the words of Lucifer, fallen Satan, came to pass? Come with me to the book of Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Look there at verse 1 to verse 5. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Verse 4, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Verse 5, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. There is a religion upon this earth today that has epitomized this verse and has made it so obscure that it seems like the words of Satan did come true for Eve and therefore can come true for us today. Watch this friend of mine. This is the Douay Bible, the Douay Reims Bible, Roman Catholic Vulgate. The book of Genesis chapter 3, we just read that. The serpent's craft, the fall of our first parents, their punishment, the promise of a redeemer. All is discovered in those verses. What do they say? But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of paradise, God hath commanded us that we should not eat and that we should not touch it, lest perhaps we die. Lest perhaps we die? And when you get down to verse 15, I will put enmities between thee and the woman, and thy seed and her seed, she shall crush thy head, and thou shalt lie in wait for her heel. No more a promise of Jesus Christ, but the, 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 the promise of Mary, the co-redemptrix, she's the one who will die. We have a falsehood in that text friends of mine. Friends of mine, the Bible speaks about a universal flood that came upon the antediluvian world. We know that eight were, sur were saved in the ark and all others perished in the flood. Genesis chapter 7. Genesis chapter 7, looking at verse 17 to verse 23. Genesis chapter 7, verses 17 to verse 23. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lift up, up above the earth, verse 18. And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the waters, verse 19. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Hmm? 15 cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered, verse 21, and all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both fowl and of cattle and of beasts and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man, verse 22, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life, of all that was in the dry land, died, 23. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle and creeping things 
and the fowl of heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. Let's go to the New Testament. First Peter. Did the Bible speaks about this in the New Testament? First Peter, chapter 3, and verse 20. First Peter, chapter 3, and verse 20. First Peter, First Peter, chapter 3, verse 20. Which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. Here it is. While the ark was a preparing, wherein few, what's the few? That is, eight souls were saved by water. Noah and his wife, Shem and his wife, Ham and his wife, Japheth and his wife. Eight individuals saved on the ark. If he was alive, when that flood came, she perished in that flood. The Bible said all men that were upon the face of the earth, upon the dry land, died. She was not on that ark, that great boat among the eight. The idea of reincarnation, nirvana, this waiting station after death idea, comes from no other source than the devil and those who would propagate it. Roman Catholicism, the papacy, the man of sin, and the so-called religious policies and theories of the man of sin, which they suggest being infallible doctrine, is from the pits of hell. The world may call it the place of limbo. In Roman Catholicism, they refer to it as purgatory. By this teaching, the lies of Satan is propagated. John 8 and verse 44, the year of your father the devil and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. This religious system, the papacy, has distorted present truth as it is found in the Bible. Sin brings death. Catholic doctrine, purgatory, Latin, purgare, to make clean, to purify, in accordance with Catholic teaching, is a place or condition of temporal punishment for those who, depart in this life in God's grace, are not entirely free from venial faults or have not fully paid the satisfaction due to their transgression. That temporal punishment is due to sin. Even after the sin itself has been pardoned by God, it's clearly the teaching of Scripture. Where? Who indeed brought man out of his first disobedience and gave him power to govern all things? Wisdom 10 verse 2. There is no such uh, text in the Bible. This is hypocrisy, friends. This is from the Apocrypha. Not in the canon, but still condemned him to eat his bread in the sweat of his brow until return unto dust. God forgave the incredulity of Moses and Aaron, but in punishment kept them from the land of promise. Numbers 20, 12. The Lord took away the sin of David, but the life of the child was forfeited because David had made God's enemies blaspheme his holy name. 2 Samuel 12, 13 to 14. That's true. In the New Testament as well as in the Old, almsgiving and fasting, and in general, penitential acts are the real fruits of repentance. Matthew 3, 8, Luke 17, 3, Luke 3, verse 3, not in the Bible. The whole penitential system of the church testifies that the voluntary assumption of penitential works has always been part of true repentance and the Council of Trent. There it is. Not in the Bible, but the tradition and the Council of Trent. It reminds the faithful that God does not always remit the whole punishment due to sin. Together with guilt, God requires satisfaction and will punish sin. And this doctrine involves, as its necessary consequence, a belief that the sinner, failing to do penance in this life, may be punished in another world, and so not be cast off 
eternally from God. Where did they go, they say? Purgatory. And what happened there? They're given a second chance, they say. Again, Catechism of the Catholic Church. 1030, the final purification or purgatory. All who die in God's grace and friendship, but still imperfectly purified, are indeed assured of eternal salvation. Who says that? But after death, they undergo purification. Who purifies them? So as to achieve the holiness necessary to enter the joy of heaven. 1031, the church, you see where it comes from? Gives the name purgatory to this final purification of the elect. This is not in the Bible, which is entirely different from the punishment of the damned. The church formulated her doctrine of faith on purgatory. It doesn't come from Jesus, especially at the councils of Florence and Trent. We just covered that. The tradition of the church, we shared it already, by tradition, by reference to certain texts of scripture, speaks of a cleansing fire. As for certain lesser faults, we must believe that before the final judgment, there's a pure frying fire. He who is truth says that whoever utters blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will be pardoned neither in this age nor in the age to come. That is true. From this sentence, we understand that certain offenses can be forgiven in this age, but certain others in the age to come. That's not what the Bible says. You see how they change that tongue? They are saying this, they can supersede God's word. 1032, this teaching is also based on the practice of prayer for the dead, already mentioned in sacred scripture. Therefore, Judas Maccabees, again, apocryphal writings, made atonement for the dead that they might be delivered from their sin, not in scripture, friends of mine. And so, the dragon power, this is who this is and who it is coming from the pits of hell, the dragon power. They consider themselves the king and have the keys of heaven and hell. And so they don't bury their popes. They embalm them and they are lined along the corridor of the floor of St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome in the Vatican. All of them are there. These are pictures I've taken of this Pope, Pope John Paul is there, not buried, but embalmed, and they sit above ground in these coffins, friends of mine. This is Roman Catholic teaching only. And what has been the result of such teaching? I say this with sympathy an unprecedented level of suicide the world has never known. Now clearly, each of us are left with a choice to make, to live or die. Live eternally with God, that is, or die the second death and never see life or the face of God. This is the choice that we make. This is a choice given us today, but again, these things have led to some of these type of ideas. World Health Organization, who one in a hundred deaths is by suicide. WHO guidance to help the world reach the target of reducing suicide rate by one third by 2030, June 20, 17, 2021. Suicide remains one of the leading causes of death worldwide, according to whose latest estimate published today in Suicide Worldwide in 2019. Every year, more people die as a result of suicide, of suicide than HIV, malaria or breast cancer, or war, or homicide. In 2019, more than 700,000 people died by suicide, one in every 100 deaths, prompting WHO to produce new guidance to help countries improve suicide prevention and care. We cannot and must not ignore suicide, said Dr. Chedros Adhanom Gerbesius. Director General of the World Health Organization. Each one is a tragedy. Yes, that's why I say with sympathy. Our attention to suicide prevention is even more important now after many months living with the, with the pestilence 19 pandemic, with many of the risk factors or suicide, job loss, 
financial stress and social isolation still very much present. You see another, you see another. Again, with sympathy, I said his friends, distraught as you can suggest that this young person is in. US News and World Report, big rise in suicide attempts by US teen girls during the pestilence, June 11, 2021, the pandemic. Dennis Thompson, Health Day reporter. Emergency room visits for suspected suicide attempts among girls between the ages of 12 and 17 increased by 26% during summer 2020 and by 50% during winter 2021, compared with the same period in 2019, researchers from the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention found. However, ER trips related to suspected suicide attempts among boys at the same age and young adults aged 18 to 25 remained stable during the pandemic. We are all at some degree of risk for mental health problems like depression and anxiety. And what elicits that underlying risk are often external variables, substances, trauma, illness, or even medications, among others, said Dr. Timothy Sullivan, Chair of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at Staten Island University Hospital in New York City. Let's see another. CNA, Catholic News Agency, Pope Francis tell Jesuits, information to help at risk used by Hannah Buchhaus, August 2nd, 2018. Pope Francis met with a group of Jesuits Wednesday, urging them to help youth who are unemployed and who might be at risk of suicide drug addiction, or of joining a terrorist organization. This is important. Understand the problem of young people. Help them feel that you understand them, and then move to solve this problem. It takes courage to be a Jesuit. It does not mean that a Jesuit must be irresponsible or reckless, no, but have courage. Courage is a grace of God. Where did this come from purgatory, right? Suggesting that, that you can be there to live. You can be given a second chance to purgatory after you are dead. So many would even suggest or commit suicide so they can go here, purgatory, so they can live again to some mystical ritual of Roman Catholicism. See, in times past, the Jesuits used modes and means of warfare, the sword, prison, rock, fire, drowning, or for coercion of acceptance to the common good, Roman Catholicism. Today, this pestilence is here to create the chaos. Mm -hmm. To create the chaos that we are in. America, the Jesuit Review, Pope Francis and bishops appear in new inoculation PSA. Getting inoculated is an act of love, he says, August 18, 2021. This is from Vatican City. Pope Francis in adding his voice to a campaign to overcome inoculation skepticism, issuing a public service announcement insisting that inoculation are safe, effective, and an act of love. What else does he have to say? Pope Francis and bishops appear in new, appear in new inoculation PSA. Getting inoculated is an act of love. Pope Francis is adding his voice to a campaign to overcome vaccine skepticism, issuing a public service announcement insisting that Inoculations are safe, effective, and an act of love. The video message released Wednesday is aimed at a global audience, but directed particularly at the Americas. The Vatican has vowed an all-out effort to overcome inoculation hesitancy and encourage widespread inoculation around the world. This is where we are at, friends of mine, soon it will become prevalent 
even an enforced law to accept the policies of popery. These suicides have many to blame, but the common culprits are scientists, religious religions, false so called, and yes, a widespread of dep depression in society. Now that the chaos is here, it is time to prance, time to take the reins and control over the human mind. That is the premise of Jesuitism. And that is where our world is headed, friends of mine, for this man is a Jesuit. What is their oath? I now in the presence of the Almighty God, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Blessed Michael the Archangel, the Blessed Saint John the Baptist, and my ghostly father, the Superior General of the Society of Jesus, that's the Jesuits, founded by Saint Ignatius Loyola, do by the womb of the Virgin, swear that His Holiness, the Pope, is Christ's Vicegerent, Vice-Regent, and is the true and only head of the Catholic or Universal Church. I do furthermore promise to declare and declare that I will, when opportunity presents, make and wage relentless war, secretly or openly, against all heretic, heretics, Protestants, and liberals, as I am directed to, extirpate them from the face of the earth, and that I will spare neither age, sex, or condition, and that I will hang, burn, waste, boil, flay, strangle, and bury alive those infamous heretics. All these happen in the Dark Ages, friends. Rip up the stomachs and wounds of the women and crush their infants' heads against the walls in order to annihilate their ex ex inexorable race. Again, from the divine calendar, you can see where this information has come from, friend of mine, the Jesuit oath. This is what they intend to do. So Pope Francis, the common good has become global by Courtney Maris, Vatican City, May 2nd, 2019. In the current situation of globalization, this is from Catholic News Agency, not only of the economy, but also of technology and cultural exchanges, the nation state is no longer able to procure the common good of its population alone, Pope Francis told the Pontifical Academy of Social Sciences, May 2nd. The common good has become global, and nations must associate for their own benefit, Francis said, noting that some nations today have a spirit of opposition rather than cooperation. The Pope called building the common good of humanity a, necess a necessary and essential element for the world balance. Here it is, friends. But in modern times, he has taken another course, the times of cruelty, and barbarism by the Inquisition are passed. A more humane and apparently kind policy must be pursued. So that oath I just read, no more, but it's still on the books. Hence, the order of the Jesuits, whose business it is to entrap, deceive, decoy, and lead the saints into error and darkness. No more hurt and killing and pain. This is what they have come to do now. In order to support this class of deceivers, a society has been formed for the propagation of the faith in aid of foreign missions in the two worlds. To this society, the Pope refers in the following extract. Above all, we especially recommend to you the aforesaid society for the propagation of the faith, which having been first established in the very ancient and most noble city of Leons in the year 1822 has, with wonderful rapidity and prosperity spread far and wide. Is that not true? Even to the White House they are. Nor indeed do we less earnestly recommend the other societies of the same kind which have been established at Vienna or elsewhere and which, the known by a different name, yet labor with equal earnestness in the same work of propagating the faith, a work which is also sustained by the most religious favor of Catholic princes, signs of the times. Millerite, 1841, volume one, number 22. 
the word is being turned upside down. In the days of the apostles, as they preached the gospel of Jesus Christ, Acts 17 and verse 6, and when they found them not, the Jew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city crying, these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. This is not the same effort, my friends, not the same effort by the Jesuits. This effort is to rid the world of whom they deem dissenters and those not going along with the prescribed agenda. They are thinking to preserve the world, but all their acts and policies with climate change, their G20 summit, and all other meetings and talks that society may produce, government agencies and religious institutions put together will not stem the tide. The common good, our common home so-called, will be replaced by a new heaven and a new earth in which will dwell the righteous of God. Isaiah 35, verse 2, 2 Peter 3, and verse 13. Oh yeah, man will have his say, mm -hmm. whether in our um, outer space exploration or creating so-called utopias on the earth that is now. But ruin and desolation will come. By the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. That's 2 Peter 3, verses 5 to verse 7. But go with me in the New Testament to the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3, and we're going to look there at verses 1 to verse 11, just right there after Philippians, just before Thessalonians, Colossians chapter 3, reading verses 1 to verse 11. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, verse 2. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, verse 3. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God, verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, did you hear, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Verse 5. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil compatience, and covetousness, which is idolatry. 6. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Verse 7. In the which ye also walk sometime when ye live in them. Verse 8. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Verse 9, lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Verse 10, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Verse 11, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, Barbarian, Scythian, bond, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Go with me to the book of Jude, just before the book of Revelation is the book of Jude. Just before the book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible is the book of Jude. Look there at verse 21. Keep yourself in the love of God. Look in. For the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Our life is in Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible is letting us know. He is our life. Eternal life can only be achieved in accepting Jesus Christ as our Savior from sin to repentance in God and be saved 
in the kingdom of God, the law does not give life. Psalm 71 in the Old Testament, the book of Psalms, almost in the middle of the Bible, we have the book of Psalm, and we're looking at chapter 71, Psalm 71, reading there verses 1 to verse 5. Psalm 71, verses 1 to verse 5. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Verse 2. Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline thine ear unto me and save me. Verse 3. Be thou my strong habitation whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Verse 4. Deliver me, O my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. Verse 5. For thou art my hope, O Lord God. Thou art my trust from my youth. The commandments of God, the law of God, points us to the only one that can save, the only one that gives life eternal, and that is God. Galatians chapter 3. Bible friends, back to the New Testament. Galatians chapter 3. We found there Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Romans. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, then Galatians, so Galatians chapter 3, and we're looking there at verse 23 to verse 25. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed, verse 24. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith, verse 25. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. That is, you have repented of sin. For sin is the transgression of the commandment law of God, First John 3 and verse 4, and turned by the Holy Spirit to righteousness. The commandment law of God conducts you conducts me to God who forgives and pardon and blot out our sin because of the life-giving blood Jesus shed for us on Calvary's cross. Amen. By this, we have life in God. Know that the condition must always be met. What is it that you say? This condition? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Look there at verse 9 to verse 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Bible friends, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor effeminate, sorry, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, verse 10, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Watch this now. And such were some of you, some of us, but ye are washed. Yes, friends. But ye are sanctified but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. This is the gospel. Pope Francis's words are half correct. They speak out of two sides of their mouth. You see, he utters words in dark speeches. Mm -hmm. The underlying idea is to reject the commandments of God, specifically the Sabbath commandment, and accept in its place Sunday, for which there is no commandment but tradition. 
tradition of Roman Catholicism. The idea is Jesus fulfilled the law on the cross, so there's no need to keep it. We are in the new creation, they say, according to Catholic teaching. Go to the book of Colossians. I know some of you have read this, these verses many, many times and hear them even preach in pulpits. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 to verse 15. And you've been dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh. Hath it quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses? Verse 14, listen now. Blotting out of the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Verse 15, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. If you look in the margin for verse 15, you says, for eating and drinking. There is no eating and drinking in the Ten Commandments. This is talking about ordinances like Passover and many others. Friends of mine, this text, as we have just read in Colossians, brings to end the sacrificial system of animals and the feast days once observed by the Jews. We must remember them, yes. It's good to remember them. Passover brings to pass the communion service and baptism. The Day of Atonement points us to the work of Christ for us in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. The Feast of Unleavened Bread points us to the bread of life, Jesus the Christ. Those feast days gives us history and the workings of God with the Hebrew nation. But when evangelicals and Roman Catholicism use that text to do away with the seventh day Sabbath or even the Ten Commandments themselves and replace it with the tradition of men, Sunday, we can say that they are off base, delusional. God says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. There is no such commandment in the Bible for Sunday. The Ten Commandment law was not just for the Jews, but for all mankind. Amen. The law stands in the foundation of the government of God from time immemorial. The Jews want to believe that keeping the commandments of God leads to life eternal. But the law does not give life. It points out sin in our lives and shows us when we are under the condemnation of the law of God, death. When we recognize that, we then turn to the life giver, Jesus the Christ. Why am I not taking sides, you may say? Well, we already covered the idea of Roman Catholicism, embalming their popes and have them lining the hall of Vatican, St. Peter's Catholic Church. Then a living pope canonizes them, enter them into heaven after they have been beautified. Then also individual, individuals in purgatory awaiting penance and prayers to get into heaven. If they are in purgatory after they die, then they are still living in some form according to the Catholic teaching. Is that not so? That is hellish error, friends of mine. In Judaism, we also have a false teaching concerning the quest for immortality. Let us take a look at this confrontational issue between these two religions, Roman Catholicism and Judaism. Newsweek. Jewish Bible, not absolute. Rabbis tell Pope after sermon reignites centuries of old feud by Alex J. Rohande, August 25th, 2021. 
following comments made by Pope Francis during a teaching before a general audience at the Vatican, Israel's top Jewish leaders issued a letter expressing concern over potentially anti-Jewish comments, asking for further clarification. In his August 11 address, Pope Francis reflected on the New Testament teachings of St. Paul saying that the law, Torah, however, does not give life. That's true. It does not offer the fulfillment of the promise because it is not capable of being able to fulfill it. Those who seek life need to look to the promise and to its fulfillment in Christ. Life comes from Jesus. In his homily, the Pope presents the Christian faith as, a, as not just superseding the Torah, but asserts that the latter no longer gives life, implying that Jewish religious practice in the present era is rendered obsolete. Rabbi Arousi said in the letter, this minister, Paul Paulikowski, former director of the Catholic Jewish Studies program at the Catholic Theological Union in Chicago said, to say that this fundamental tenet of Judaism does not give life is to denigrate the basic religious outlook of Jews and Judaism, like this priest doesn't agree with his leader. The Times of Israel, let's go to Israel now. Wednesday, August 25th, 2021, they reacted the same day. Israeli rabbis sent letter to Vatican expressing concern over papal remarks. This over here is Rabbi Ratson Rusi and then Pope Francis. In his homily, the Pope presents the Christian faith as not just superseding the Torah, but asserts that the latter no longer gives life, implying that Jewish religious practice in the present era is rendered obsolete. A Rossi reported wrote in the letter. This is in effect part of a parcel of the teaching of contempt towards Jews and Judaism that we had thought had been fully repudiated by the church. That's, that is Vatican II in the 1960s. God offered them the Torah, the law, so they could understand his will and live in justice. We have to think that at that time, a law like this was necessary. It was a, it was a tremendous gift that God gave his people. But it's not a law of the Old Testament. It's a law for all mankind throughout eternity. What does the Jews say in the Jewish life encyclopedia? The belief in a continuous life of the soul, which underlies primitive ancestor worship and the rites of necromancy practiced also in ancient Israel. This is not so. That's, that's the witch of Endor hmm? by King Saul. That was error and he is lost for it, was discovered and super suppressed by the prophet and lawgiver as antagonistic to the belief in Yahweh, the God of life, the ruler of heaven and earth, whose reign was not extended over Sheol until post-exilic times. As a matter of fact, eternal life was ascribed exclusively to God as to celestial beings who eat of the tree of life and live forever. We read that already in Genesis. Whereas men by being driven out of the garden of Eden was deprived of the opportunity of eating the food of immortality. We read that, that's also true. It is the psalmist's implicit faith in God's omnipotence and omnipresence that leads him to the hope of immortality. We're talking about these scriptures, whereas Job betrays only a desire for not a real faith in, a life after death, still clings to the belief in Sheol as the dis, dis, destination of man. It was only in connection with the messianic hope that under the influence of Persian ideas, the belief in resurrection lent to the disembodied soul, a conscious, a continuous existence. Have mercy. Where did the Jews get this? Watch this friends. The belief in the immortality of the soul came to the Jews from contact with Greek thought and chiefly through the philosophy of Plato. What did they do with the Torah and the Bible? <laughs> they replaced it with this, its principal exponent, who was led to it through Orphic and Eleusinian mysteries in which Babylonian and Egyptian views 
were strangely blended as the Semitic name Minos and the Egyptian Ra, <laughs> ruler of Hades, with others sufficiently true. The Jews, Judaism, have gone off base. And in that, what has happened? The devil, also referred to as Satan, is best known as the personification of evil and the nemesis, the personification of evil and the nemesis of good people everywhere. His image and story have evolved over the years and the devil has been called many different names in various centuries, Beelzebub, Lucifer, Satan, and Mephistopheles, to name a few, with various physical descriptions, including horns and hooved feet. But this malevolent being and his legion of demons continue to strike fear in people from all walks of life as the antithesis of all things good. In Islam, what do they believe? The devil is known as Shaitan, thought to have rebelled against God. In Judaism, Satan is a verb and generally refers to a difficulty or temptation to overcome instead of a literal being. Where did the Jews go, friends of mine? What happened? How did they get to this? Accepting Greek philosophy. And you could see a sermon here speaking more to this on the Great Controversy, a sermon called The Great Controversy here on these Desire of Ages ministries. The philosophy of Plato, Greek mysticism has brought a damnable influence upon the world at large. The Jews and many the world over accepted these ideologies hook, line, and sinker. The absolute truth given by God is largely ignored and mankind is left to the tradition of men. <laughs> God gave the nation of Israel oracles, a powerful word, and they have turned their backs on it because of the Messiah in Jesus, whom God has sent, John 17, verse 3, and has now acquiesced to their rabbis and teachers and philosophy. Let's go to the book of Genesis again. The first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Watch this, friends. And man became a living soul. Notice, friends of mine. Without the living power of God, the breath of God, life placed into mankind, we would remain a lump of clay. Did you get that? <laughs> this is problematic, problematic where the Jews and many Christian faiths have gone, friends of mine. Very problematic. The only safety now is to search for the truth as revealed in the word of God, as for hid treasure. That's our only safety. The Sabbath question, and man, not immortal, and the testimony of Jesus are the great and important truths to be understood, which will prove as an anchor to hold God's people in these perilous times. That's Revelation chapter 14, the three angels' messages. But the mass despise the truths of God's word and prefer fables. That's what 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 11 and verse 12 says, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie. Have mercy. The most licentious and corrupt are highly flattered by these satanic spirits, which they believe to be the spirits of their dead friends, and they are vainly puffed up in their fleshly minds, Colossians 2 verse 19, and not holding the head, that's God, from which all the body by joints and bands have been nourishment ministered and knit together 
increased with the increase of God. They deny him who ministers strength to the body that every member may increase with the increase of God. Vain philosophy. The members of the body are controlled by the head. Spiritualists lay aside the head and every member of the body they believe must act themselves and fix laws will lead them on in a state of progression to perfection without a head. John 15, one to six. Christ is the source of our strength. He is the vine. We are the branches. We must receive nourishment from the living vine. He is the vine. We are the branches. We must receive nourishment from the living vine friends. Deprived of the strength and nourishment of the vine, we are as members of the body without a head and are very, and in the very position Satan wishes mm -mm -mm, us to be in that he may control these members as pleases himself. Spiritual Gifts, Volume 4a, page 90, paragraph 1. Immortality brought by Christ. Christ brought life and immortality to life to the gospel. 2 Timothy 1, verse 10. No man can have an independent spiritual life apart from him. The sinner is not immortal. What did I say? The sinner is not immortal. For God has said, the soul that sinneth, it shall die, Ezekiel 18.4. This means all that it expresses. It reaches farther than the death which is common to all. It means the second death. Men start back at this saying, would you make man no more than a beast? This is thought to be degrading, but it is true. But what is it? that elevates man in the sight of God? Is it his accumulation of money? No, for God declares the gold and the silver are mine. If man abuses his entrusted treasures, God can scatter faster than man can gather. Man may have brilliant intellect. He may be rich in the possession of natural endowments, but these are all given him by God, his maker. God can remove the gift of reason and in a moment, Man will become as Nebuchadnezzar, degraded to the level of the beasts of the field. This God does because man acts as though his wisdom and power had been gotten independently of him. Man is only mortal. And while he feels himself too wise to accept Jesus, he will remain only mortal. Selected Messages, Book One. Page 297, paragraph three. We can go to the book of First Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 51 to 55. First Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 51. To 55. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Verse 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Verse 55, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? You might have been awaiting this text of scripture throughout this sermon. Notice still, friends, that it is in Jesus the Christ that man lives in corruption and immortality is a gift from God to the overcomer, those whose life is hid in Christ in God. Yes, 
man is not yet immortal. Satan cannot hold the dead in his grasp when the Son of God bids them live. Hallelujah. He cannot hold in spiritual death one soul who in faith receives Christ's word of power. God is saying to all who are dead in sin, awake that thou sleepest, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead. Ephesians 5 and verse 14. That word is eternal life. As the word of God, which bade the first man live, still gives us life. As Christ's word, young man, I say unto thee, arise, gave life to the youth of name, Luke 7. So that word, arise from the dead, is life to the soul that receives it. God hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, Colossians 1.13. It is all offered us in his word. If we receive the word, we have the deliverance. And if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Romans 8, 11, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16 and 17. This is the word of comfort wherewith he, God, bids us comfort one another. This being the desire of ages ministries, the desire of ages, page 300. 20. Once again, go back and read the verses. First Timothy, but well, that's where we started. First Timothy, chapter 6. Now read verse 11 to verse 16. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed good pro a good profession before many witnesses. 13. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate, witness a good confession. Verse 14. That thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, verse 15, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, verse 16, finally, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Friends of mine, we must be able to give a sound reason of the hope that is within us. What is the hope of which we are to give a reason? The hope of eternal life through Jesus the Christ. The world is pushing an inoculation as if it is the ticket to life eternal, man is reaching at straws, philosophical ideas and world ideologies to save itself. They are seeking to work together. And yes, the one mind to evil will be achieved. Revelation 17 verse 13. And then verse 14 states, Revelation 17 14, they shall make war with the lamb and the Lamb shall overcome them. That's when they have one mind, one mind in evil. <laughs> and what, what happens when they have that one mind? They, they, they seek to make war against Jesus Christ. This is the time we have come to, friends of mine. Only on the side of Jesus can we find safety and salvation. God calls from heaven, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, 
and that you receive not of the plagues, and that her sins, for her sins, have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Revelation 18, verse 4 and 5. For what purpose am I to answer the call of God and come out from among them? Hear the word of God again, friend of mine. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 17. God wants us to come and live with him eternally in the new heavens and the new earth. I hear his call. Do you hear his call, friend? Just now, knock on the door of mercy. Ask in faith. The door will be opened and your request granted. Just now, would you join me in prayer for salvation, for the working of the power of God in our hearts to accept Jesus, the Savior whom God has sent? Would you join me just now in prayer, friends? Oh, Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to proclaim your word. Yes, there's a quest of the 8 billion plus, near 8 billion people on the earth, a quest for life eternal. Man is doing it his way, seeking for utopia, nirvana, or nirvana, or whatever they are seeking for. And God has given us Jesus the Christ, who alone has immortality. There's a choice to be made. And Father, I pray that those in the hearing of my voice, those who are listening to the sermon, would make a choice for Jesus Christ. Come up to the side of God. So that when Jesus shall come, we shall be received into his glory. Oh, forgive us of our sins, we pray, oh God. Keep us in the hollow of the hand of Jesus Christ. Nail scarred as they may be, but they are good hands. Help us to overcome the enemy. Help us to overcome sin in our, in our lives and live a holy life for you through the power of Jesus Christ. Again, forgive us, we pray, and save us at last when you shall come in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. Until we meet again, friends of mine, on this Desire of Ages Ministries, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Maranatha. <laughs>